На моја чест и задоволство денеска на Универзитетското радио и телевизија го имаме амбасадорот на Соединетите Американски држави во Република Македонија, господинот Джес Бели. Your Excellency, welcome in our radio and television. Thank you very much for having me. So, since we are on radio and television, I'm going to ask you, my first question is going to be, are there any possibilities for cooperation with the University of Gotts Delchev and in what fields? Well, I came out here, this is my first visit to the University um, I believe that one of the most important things I can do as ambassador of the United States is to help bring our uh, university students together, faculty, university communities, uh, and that's what, that, that's what I'm here to do today, to, to do a little bit of that on my first visit. We've had uh, cooperation uh, with the university in many fields already, some dating back to before it was a, 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 a full-fledged university. Your rector told me about that today. Uh, we've had Fulbright exchanges. Uh, we had a professor teaching here, an American professor teaching here last year. We've had some professors and, and students go to the United States for postgraduate or, or graduate studies. So those are kind of uh, traditional areas where we cooperate. We're sitting in a mock courtroom uh, that uh, was helped built with uh, U.S. funding to help um, Macedonia's judicial system and new lawyers learn the new criminal procedure and the, uh, and the uh, advocacy they have to do. So this is a, tr a practice courtroom where they will learn those things. So I think there are, very, there, 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 there are many areas where there's possible cooperation, but as I said to the rector of the university this morning, the best cooperation comes from faculty members themselves, both research they do together across the sea, and also the students they bring together. That brings enduring cooperation. In one of your videos, actually in one of your introduction video, you've mm -hmm. mentioned that uh, one of your priorities mm -hmm. in Macedonia is developing links between American and Macedonian students. Right. So what does the embassy undertake so far? Well, we have many, many different programs to do that. Uh, first, we want to get university students here interested in going to the United States. So we have a number of programs, both formal educational programs, but things like the summer work and travel program that help them. We, as I said, we have Fulbright programs. We help Macedonian students uh, learn how to apply to American colleges and universities. It's a very, very different system. Mm -hmm. And so uh, through our American corners here in Steep and in elsewhere, we have uh, classes that coach students on how they can apply themselves to the university, how they can get scholarship funding to finance the studies. That's often another barrier. So those are the kinds of practical things because most of the educational s exchanges that happen in the world do not happen government to government. They happen through private means or just between two institutions. So it's helping make those connections getting people to think about it a little bit too. What are the most popular educational programs that uh, for students uh, offered by the embassy exactly? In, 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 well, the most common scholarship we have is, is the Fulbright scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some high school exchange programs uh, as well. But again, I think the most important thing is to tap into students' own abilities, their own ability to apply to a university, their ability to find ways to finance that, that's going to open up undergraduate education more than any single government-funded scholarship. Because you know what? American campuses are looking to be global institutions. And so they want uh, students from different countries. So if your application says you're from Macedonia, you automatically stand out in a pool of thousands of other candidates. So it's a good thing. Sure. Your today's lecture was about U.S. elections uh, through a personal perspective, yeah. as I saw. Yeah. Uh, briefly, what is your personal pr perspective on emerging extreme left and extreme r right uh, pr presidential candidates in the United States? Well, I don't know that I would use quite the terms extreme right and extreme left. Far what right, you do... Uh, that what, what you do see is an enormous amount uh, of dissatisfaction uh, among uh, American voters. And you can see any number of commentators writing about it. I think the level of dissatisfaction uh, has surprised some of the pundits and experts in this cycle. They've now digested it. Um, and so you do get a stronger uh, 
uh, vision in the Democratic Party to focus more on the issue of income inequality. On the Republican side, you get more populist policies, uh, often defending jobs, uh, often defending against uh, a perceived uh, laxness towards immigration, towards trade deals with other countries. So I think uh, that is not new in my country. I, I don't see this as a particularly a crisis in the electorate, um, but it is a wake-up call for, for, uh, for mainstream politicians in both parties. They're having to adjust, and we'll find out how it works in the, in the general election. What is the embassy doing to establish positive image of the United States in Macedonia? Well, I'd like to think we have a fairly positive image. I think we share uh, a vision that most Macedonians share of their country moving towards uh, membership in the Euro-Atlantic family of institutions in the European Union and NATO. Um, we want to help that. Of course, some of, sometimes people don't like what they do. They have, uh, they have different views than us on certain policies here around the world. That's great. Uh, we totally support people uh, expressing uh, those views. What we really want to do as an embassy is establish not an image. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not running a popularity contest. I'm trying to establish relationships. Relationships that bring our students together. Relations that uh, help increase business ties. Relations that help cooperation on anything from climate change to science. So. Th that's what uh, that's what I'm about is creating relationships. It's not a popularity contest over image. You've mentioned on, on your lecture today is the International Day of Press Freedom. Yeah. So, what is your point of view on media freedom in Macedonia in general? Well, I would say, I mean, obviously, you can read any number of reports. We have a great deal of concern uh, about the decline uh, in freedom of the media in Macedonia. I think, I think that decline can be reversed. I think you do have good, smart journalists, um, but I think there are some structural issues that, that, that need to be dealt with. Um, but I would leave, since you mentioned World Press Freedom Day, uh, I would leave you uh, with the, the thought that I shared from Thomas Jefferson, a man who complained bitterly about being mistreated by the press, but was the author of the Declaration of Independence. And he basically said, you cannot restrict free media without losing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important thought uh, to keep as you look at free media. How do you keep it independent? How do you help? Part of that is making media economically independent. Uh, how do you allow people to say and, and look into issues without fear of, uh, of harassment or, uh, or worse? So those, are, those are important issues to, to ask, and I would ask Macedonians, I would turn the question around to you, how do you make media better in Macedonia? I, I guess we are doing the best, so uh, what, is, what is the legacy you wish to leave as a stamp of your work as an ambassador, as a US ambassador to Macedonia? Um, I, I haven't actually thought about that since I'm only 15 months into the job. Uh, I'm not thinking about my legacy mm -hmm. yet. But I will say that the thing I enjoy more than anything else here is connecting with young people in this country, talking to them. Uh, there's an enormous amount of talent here. Uh, and I think that if the United States can help, uh, help them uh, realize their dreams, connect with them, uh, then I think uh, our relationship is going to be in a very good spot. In your extensive experience across numerous regions, uh, how different is the diplomatic life in Macedonia compared by the other places you have been uh, positioned as a diplomat? Uh, you were stationed in Turkey before? Right. Well, I would say uh, Macedonia obviously is smaller than Turkey. <laughs> yeah. uh, that has uh, some advantages in that I can, be, I can be, see so much more of this country, connect so much more with it. Uh, personally than I could in a country uh, of 80 million people. So that, that, that size, in some ways, that intimacy uh, is, is, is a lot of fun. And my last question would be, well, when you arrived in 2014 in yeah. Macedonia, you said you wanted to explore the country. Yeah. Have you done it so far, and what, the, what are the pros and cons in Macedonia for you? Well, first of all, I've had a chance to explore some of it, not enough of it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I have a lot, a lot of places I still want to go. Uh, I hope to get to climb Pelister this summer. I could, I could give you a little bucket list. Um, but the, the close accessibility of fantastic nature and wonderful cultural institutions, monasteries, and so forth, is, is, has been really a, a lot of fun. Second is uh, unexpected encounters with warm people. Mm-hmm. That's always nice as a foreigner. I think those are the kinds of things you remember more than monuments and, uh, and, and hotels and so forth. Um, the one thing I would say is take care of your national parks. This year is the 100th anniversary of the U.S. National Park Service. You have a wonderful treasure in these national parks. Take care of them. And if I had one little piece of advice, honestly, I don't mean to be mean, but everybody just pick up the trash when you're there. (laughs) Okay, so how do you perceive Macedonia by the end of your term? I don't know. It's not the end of my term yet. I'll tell you when I'm there. Thank you very much for the interview.